I was in Malmo last weekend and I bought the most delicious coffee. It is just so good. It's not too fruity. You know how some coffee is too fruity? This is not. Anyway, can you buy a complete hi-fi system for a thousand euros? And this question came up last Friday night when I was out with some friends and they were obviously aghast at like these Klipsch Forte that cost 4,000 euros or the Cord Dave that costs over 10,000 euros. So as usual, they would ask like, what do we buy if we don't buy Bose? Interestingly, Germans say Bose, a bit like Hose, which means trousers in German. And I asked them what, you know, what stopped them from looking around at other things themselves. And they said two things really. One, that there was just so much to choose from. They had no idea where to start, how to build a system, no clue. And the second thing was related to that was complexity. Like having to get this amplifier, these speakers, that phono stage, that DAC. They said they had no idea where to start with that. So really it's a tyranny of choice. So I'm making this video today because Steve Gutenberg recently tackled it. And it reminded me of a conversation he and I had about four years ago on a panel at a New York show about, you know, what is affordable hi-fi? What can you buy for 500 bucks? And that conversation led me to encouraging Marjorie Bulmert, who runs the Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, to implement more affordable hi-fi rooms at her show, which she has done. So if you were there two weekends ago, you would have seen probably a $500 room, a $1,000 room, and a $1,500 room. So today we're asking what you can buy for $1,000 euros. Euros are a bit stronger, so you can get a little bit more for your money. The third reason I'm making this video is because the day after I was talking with my friends about, you know, what can you buy for 1,000 euros, Caleb Dennison at Digital Trends also tackled this question. He posited a $1,000 system, but bizarrely only included the speakers and the amplifier and not the turntable. So I wanted to have a go at this. Um, the fourth reason I'm doing this is because I've already had two cups of this delicious coffee, so I'm higher than 12 kites right now. So in tackling this, I'm not going to give you a whole range of possibilities. I'm not gonna give you a bunch of speakers to choose from or a bunch of amps to choose from. I'm just going to suggest one system. And the aim of that system is to simplify the connections between components. So where we can get two components together that not only saves on price, but that reduces complexity. And I'm also going to make sure that this system plays vinyl and streams digital audio but without relying on the end user having an existing computer to use, like through, through USB. So I'm gonna give you a, a turntable system that also has a DAC and a streamer. So our first component is the turntable, and that's a Pioneer PLX500. That's a direct drive turntable that also has a built-in phono stage and USB out if you wanna digitize your records, which is what some people want to do. One other big benefit of having a direct drive turntable as opposed to a belt drive is that we don't have to move the belt from one pulley to another to change the rotational speed of the platter. And for me, that makes entry level belt drive turntables a little bit fiddly. I like things where you can just push a button, 33, 45, and you can do that with the Pioneer. The downside of the Pioneer is the cartridge that it ships with is, well, there's no really easy way to say this, it's a piece of crap. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that off, we're gonna throw it away, and we're gonna buy an Autophon 2M Red. And that's the cartridge that you find on many decent entry-level turntables. It came with the Technics SL1500C, which I reviewed recently, although I didn't review it. Um, but anyway, the Autophon is a great entry-level cart. I don't think anybody would be disappointed about that for the money. That's, what's that, uh, 99 euros, I think you can get that for. So the turntable is around 300 euros. The extra cartridge is about 100 euros. So already we're at 400 euros of our thousand. So we have to save some money on our streamer slash DAC. Now, rather than go for something like a shit Modi 3 with a PC, because I said I wouldn't do that, 
I'm gonna suggest the Alo Boss Player. And that's basically a Raspberry Pi with a DAC board fitted to the top. So the Raspberry Pi acts as the streamer, the Alo board acts as the DA converter. It's all wrapped in an acrylic case. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but you can get that for about 120 euros. And it's plug and play. You just connect the power, connect it to your network, and then use the, the Volumio interface. I think I would recommend that for beginners as a way to get up and running, super easy, and you can integrate Cobas and Tidal and things like that. Of course, you can swap out the micro SD card for any operating system you like. So if you wanna add Rune or Squeezebox, that's just a matter of like rewriting the operating system on that card, reinserting, rebooting. And that's a good starting point. It is a little bit sort of DIY-esque in its appearance, but I think that can be easily tucked away. Now, what about an amplifier? Well, I'm gonna suggest two amplifiers and they're actually inside the speaker. One amplifier per driver. And that is one of the many advantages of having an active speaker is that the amplifier drives the driver directly. And then behind that is a DSP crossover, which is also another advantage. Although I don't think at this kind of level, people are going to be obsessing too much about the merits and potential disadvantages of DSP. But an active speaker gets the amplifier and the speaker all in one box, which means we're not paying for one of the most expensive parts of an amplifier, and that's the case. So if we put the amps inside the speaker, we can forget about the amplifier case and we're just buying the speaker. And again, that plays to our simplicity brief. And talking of simplicity, we don't have to worry about what amplifier fits which speaker because the manufacturer has done that for us. In this case, that manufacturer is Berlin's Adam Audio. The speaker itself is the T5V. So that's an entry level active speaker. It has a two inch ribbon tweeter, so highly transparent, very smooth. It has a five inch mid bass driver, so plenty of punch there. I don't think anybody buying these at, what are they, 340 euros a pair would be disappointed. So we've got our turntable, we've got our DAC streamer, we've got our speakers. Now the speakers have balanced and unbalanced inputs on the back. So we could connect the turntable to the single ended, for example, and then adapt the DAC's output to go into the balanced input. But that's a bit fiddly because we're gonna have to reach around the back every time you wanna flip them over. So our final component will allow us to switch between the turntable with its phono stage and the Raspberry Pi with its DAC board seamlessly. And that component is the shit sys passive preamplifier. Now that's 50 bucks in the USA. Here in Germany, it's a bit more expensive. I think it's about 80 euros, but it's a small little box with a volume control. And we connect that to the speakers and then connect our DAC and streamer and our turntable to it. So that's it. We've got a complete system, active speakers, fed by a preamplifier, which in turn switch between our turntable with built-in phono stage and our Raspberry Pi with a DAC hat on top. And the total comes in at under a thousand euros. I think it's about euros if I've done that calculation properly. That's about a thousand dollars. But that's not the end of the story. That's really just the beginning because you can go out and you can go, well, I don't like those Adam speakers. I'm gonna swap them out for something else, which is exactly the kind of thinking that I want to promote with this video. This is just a starting point. Hopefully I've come up with products that you probably wouldn't otherwise consider. Now, if this video does well, I will consider doing another one for a lower price point or maybe even a higher price point. I don't know. We will see. If you found this video helpful in any way, please give it a thumbs up down below. And if you like my attitude towards not just high-end audio, but entry-level audio, please subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching.